continuing where I left off. So it was with the Cassandra as bought us all safe home from Malabar after England took the Viceroy of the Indies. So it was with the old Warris, Flint's old ship, as I've seen a muck with the red blood and fit to sink with gold. Ah, cried another voice, that of the youngest hand on board and evidently full of admiration. He was the flower of the flock, was Flint. Davis was a man too, by all accounts, said Silver. I never sailed along of him, first with England, then with Flint. That's my story. And now here, on my own account, in a manner of speaking, I laid by nine hundred safe from England and two thousand after Flint. That ain't bad for a man before the mast, all save in bank. Taint earning now. It's saving, does it? You may lay to that. Where's all England's men now? I don't know. Where's Flint's? Why, most on board here, and glad to get the duff. Been begging before that, some on um. Old Pew has had lost his sight, and might have thought shame, spends twelve hundred pound in a year, like a lord in Parliament. Where is he now? Well, he's dead now, and under hatches. But for two year before that, Shiver my timbers, the man was starving. He begged, and he stole, and he cut throats, and starved at that by the powers. Well, it ain't much use, after all, said the young seaman. Taint much use for fools. You may lay to it that, nor nothing, cried Silver. But now you look here. You're young. You are. But you're as smart as paint. I see that when I set my eyes on you, I'll talk to you like a man. You may imagine how I felt when I heard this abominable old rogue addressing another in the very same words of flattery as he had used to myself. I think if I had been able that I would have killed him through the barrel. Meantime, he ran on, little supposing he was overheard. Here it is, about gentlemen of fortune, they lives rough and they risk swinging, but they eat and drink like fighting cocks, and when a cruise is done, why, it's hundreds of pounds instead of hundreds of farthings in their pockets. Now, the most goes for rum and a good fling, and to see again in their shirts, but that's not the course I lay, I put it all away. Some here, some there, and none too much anywheres. By reason of suspicion. I am fifty, mark you. Once back from this cruise, I set up gentlemen in earnest. Time enough too, says you. Ah, but I've lived easy in the meantime. Never denied myself, or nothing heart desires, and slept soft and ate dainty all my days but when at sea. And how did I begin? before the mass like you well said the other but all the other money's gone now ain't it you daren't show face in bristol after this why where might su you suppose it was asked silver the virusly at bristol and banks and places answered his companion it were said the cook it were when we weighed anchored but my old missus has it all by now, and the spyglass is sold, lease and goodwill and rigging, and the old girl's off to meet me. I would tell you where, for I trust you, but it you'd make jealousy among the mates. And can you trust your missus? asked the other. Gentlemen of fortune, returned the cook, usually trust little among themselves, and right they are, you may lay to it. But I have a way with me, I have. When a mate brings a slip on his cable, one as knows me, I mean, it won't be in the same world with old John. There was some that was fear of Pew, and some that was fear of Flint. But Flint, his own self, was fear of me. Fear he was, and proud. They 
was the roughest crew afloat, was Flint's. The devil himself would have been feared to go to sea with them. Well, now I tell you, I am not a boasting man, and you've seen yourself how easy I keep company. But when I was quartermaster, lambs wasn't the word for Flint's old buccaneers. Ah, you may be sure of yourself in old John's ship. Well, I'll tell you now, replied the lad. I didn't half a quarter like the job till I had this talk with you, John. But there's my hand on it now. And a brave lad you were, and smart too, answered Silver, shaking hands so hardly that all the barrel shook. And a finer figurehead for a gentleman of fortune I never clapped my eyes on. By this time I had begun to understand the meaning of their terms. By a gentleman of fortune, they plainly meant neither more nor less than a common pirate, and the little scene that I had overheard was the last act in the corruption of one of the honest hands, perhaps of the last one left aboard. But on this point I was soon to be relieved, for Silver, giving a little whistle, a third man strolled up and sat down by the party. Dick Square, said Silver. Oh, I know Dick was squared, returned the voice of the coxswain, Israel Hands. He's no fool, is Dick. And he turned his quid and spat. But look here, he went on, here's what I want to know. Barbecue, how long are we a going to stand off and on like a blessed bum boat? I've had a most enough old Captain Smollett. He's hazed me long enough, by thunder. I want to go into the cabin, I do. I want their pickles and wines and that. Israel, said Silver, your head ain't much account, nor ever was, but you're able to hear, I reckon, leastways. Your ears is big enough. Now, here's what I say. You'll burr forward, and you'll live hard, and you'll speak soft, and you'll keep sober till I give the word, and you may lay to that, my son. Well, I don't say no, do I? growled the coxswain. What I say is when, that's what I say. When, by the powers, cried Silver. Well, now, if you want to know, I'll tell you when. The last moment I can manage, and that's when. Here's a first-rate seaman, Captain Smollett. Sails the blessed ship for us. Here's the squire and doctor with a map and such. I don't know what, where it is, do I? No more do you, says you. Well, then, I mean the squire and doctor shall find the stuff and help us to get it aboard by the powers. Then we'll see. If I was sure of you all, sons of double Dutchmen, I'd have Captain Smollett navigate us halfway back again before I struck. Why, we're all seamen aboard here, I should think, said the lad Dick. We're all fox hands, you mean, snap silver. We can steer a course, but who's to set one? That's what all you gentlemen split on, first and last. If I had my way, I'd have Captain Smollett work us back into the trades at least. Then we have no blessed miscalculations and a spoonful of water a day. But I know the sort you are. I'll finish with them at the island as soon as the blunt on board, and a pity it is. But you're never happy till you're drunk. Split my sides. I've a sick heart to sail with the likes of you. Easy all along, Jai cried Israel. Who's a crossing of you? Why, how many tall ships think ye now have I seen laid aboard? And how many brisk lads drying in the sun at execution dock cried Silver? And all for the same, this same hurry and hurry and hurry. You hear me? I sing a thing or two at sea. I have. If you would on lay your course and appoint to windward, you would ride in carriages, you would, but not you. I know you. You'll have your mouthful of rum tomorrow and go hang. And I'm going to leave it off there. So, um, yeah, if you like the series, give me a like or a comment. And I appreciate you subscribing to the channel. And I'll continue with Treasure on the next episode. Thank you for tuning in. See you next one.